Good afternoon, gardening friends. It's now Sunday, February 17th at about 12.30. I'm still fighting off the flu, but I don't want to bother you too much with that. Um, actually, I wanted to get off, start it off this week by showing you a couple of comparisons on uh, a couple of things in the garden. Um, well, let me just get started. I just basically wanted to show you the difference between how I used to do my plant labeling and how I'm doing it now. On the left you can see the one that says Morning Glory Heavenly Blue. I just transplanted that this morning, early afternoon. Um, that's a smaller pot than the 8 inch. Um, but basically what I put on it was I put the name of the plant and the date that I planted it. Uh, planted it in this case by seed. And that at least allowed me to track how long it was taking to germinate, um, or having an idea essentially if one plant is older than another so I can sort of say okay well this one looks a lot smaller well okay here's why because it was planted later on the right I have a plant card that has a whole bunch of information granted it looks almost redacted uh, at the water requirement and the fertilizer type there that's because I was trying to color code some of the uh, sections there and I goofed and I had printed them in green and realized my color coding was for blue and I tried to do the blue over the green and that gave me kind of a black but at least I know what it is and uh, now I know that uh, blue means medium uh, in both the case of water and fertilizer and that's my own coding you can choose your own or you could leave them uncoded but actually if I just sort of pan across you can see I have color coding on a lot of these and it allows me to remember from plant to plant which days I should be watering them or how often I should be giving them fertilizer. So that's it for the demos. I'm going to get to doing a little transplanting and then trying to get a little bit of rest. Okay folks, so I've actually got a couple of nasturtiums in this pot and I got this pot from the pots I had over here and uh, nasturtium, if you haven't watched too many of my videos is these plants up here where the flowers are actually edible. There's a really nice orange one in there. Um, I've actually to figure out what variety that is because I'm ultimately going to start tagging all of these planters outside. I'm working on that. I'll let you know when I get that one done. There's another one, another nasturtium there. So basically all four of these planters over here are nasturtium. And well, and up in there I've got some morning glory which I need to clean up at some point. Uh, and here's another that's a peach melba on there it's the yellow with the little orange dots which aren't too obvious right now in there uh, I don't know if that's a young one or if it's starting to go but either way that's what the nasturtiums look like and I enjoy nasturtiums so I want more on the patio and I've only got the one planted right now which is a peach melba which is like that yellow flower I just showed you I got about four seeds planted in this section here uh, and the other problem is I don't know what variety these are. So I'm going to transplant them on the patio. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and enjoy them. And as far as a garden plan and trying to sort of balance the color outside, I'll have to plant some more nasturtiums and we'll go from there. In fact, actually, now that I think of it, I have an abundance of them here because I planted four seeds and I really only need about one or two in that space. So if they all germinate, I'll uh, thin it and take one of them and put it outside to sort of replace the ones I just stole. Not really stole. I mean, if you think about it, I paid for all the seeds, I paid for all the soil. Um, this is just my own sort of personal contribution to the apartment complex. So, anyway, uh, more nasturtium coming and it'll hopefully help fill out the rest of my patio and then I can really concentrate outside. I got about another day of sun before the rain comes, so I figured I was going to try and get this done today so to get a good day to sort of recover from shock, and uh, they do transplant fairly well. So uh, then I guess we'll pick up somewhere midweek. Uh, maybe I'll just update you on what the rain looks like. Or maybe, maybe we'll have the odd weather that we had a couple of weeks ago when uh, it was raining all over Southern California, but we had a hole in the clouds above us, so maybe it'll actually be sunny. Who knows? Okay, that's for, that's it for transplants today. Um, as you can see, um, my shelves are pretty well filled out. There's a space left here, but uh, I planted the nasturtium, one of them, and then it turned out as I went to go grab the second, it was actually two of them. So that's why I got two of them there now. Uh, and I've watered everything in. 
And what else was I going to say as we back up here? Oh yeah, that space there. Uh, I actually gave my mom my last remaining basil plant and I gave it to her in the container it was in. So, um, depending on what she wants to do with it, at some point I may recover that particular planter. If not, there's room for one more in there. So, maybe just a tad bit of spacing between them and it'll all fit nice and neatly. That's it for today. I really need to go get some rest. I have a problem with gardening. I think I'm addicted. Good morning, gardening friends. It's Wednesday the 20th, I believe, at almost 8.30 in the morning. And what I had reported as being uh, rain all week has changed to rain yesterday, and now we have sun. So let's take a look at what the rain has done. Looking through here, there's not a whole lot of change. Obviously, we've got a lot of Simpson. We've got the um, salad fresh spinach is doing fairly well. Um, no real sign of anything in either of the basil planters. Uh, no activity up here. Nothing in the melon patch yet. Um, obviously, it looks like these all got a good amount of water. So I'm not going to have to water for a couple of days. Um, the butter crunch is still growing. Not a whole lot to say there. Um, all of these nasturtiums that I transplanted, they're all kind of flopped over, but now that they're going to get some sun and heat, I think they'll come back to life. Um, not much more here. I will say there... Oh, actually, you can see a lot of dirt on those plant cards. So it looks like the rain was a bit more violent than I thought. But uh, we'll hope that it hasn't done any real damage. And I was going to say on the Easter egg radishes, I've got more sprouts. Um on the what is this I can't even oh that's the carrots I thought a second ago I saw something but oh yep there we go right down here there's a tiny little sprout um, other than that I'm not seeing much other changes around here and that's it for on the patio I take that back I just noticed as I was walking by there appears to be a sprout here. And there appears to be another sprout up here. That's probably one of each type of uh, melon. And we'll see if we get any more sprouts. But that's it for the patio now. As for outside, I've cleaned up the petunias a bit. Uh, and they seem to have survived the rain. At least the one on the right was doing not so well, but it's bouncing back. And I also wanted to point out that I've cleaned up that one plant over here, that vine. You can see what it looks like here, actually. I don't know if the light's all that good for you to be able to see. But that's what that looks like, and we'll go check the back of the building. Okay, so this would be about the only planter worthy of note that I've got three flowers on it. Two orange and one peach melba. Uh, the other three planters don't have much. Over here, no major change, but you know what? It's early in the morning, probably the earliest I've ever shot, so uh, not a whole lot of changes. And we'll just keep watching and update you as things happen. Okay, folks, just a quick little update. Uh, earlier I was just sort of enjoying a little bit of birding, sitting and watching our friends up at the uh, birdhouse style theater, and uh, I noticed the birds coming down into the garden here and it seemed like they were looking for something and then I realized, I'll explain this in a second, but I realized that one of the sprouts I had here was chopped off. So it was either a grasshopper or more likely, or maybe more likely, it was the bird. So, but as it turns out another one popped over here. So I've got two of the uh, lemon drop melon sprouts. And now I don't have any of the canary melon melts, uh, canary melon sprouts. So what I've done is I've taken screening material, and I'm just putting that up over. It'll still let the sun through. As you can see, the sun's kind of hitting it pretty nicely. Um, but hopefully the birds will see the netting and decide not to go for it. I've also done the same up here where I had sprouts. So that's the back three and one of them here. I haven't gotten any 
sprouts. Actually, I thought I had a sprout on one of the, the uh, basil plants, so they may have gotten that one. Well, I'll just have to watch for sprouts and add more screening as necessary. Uh, Good morning, gardening friends. It's now February 22nd to add a little past 8.30. And uh, I just want to give you a couple updates. I want to show you in my tomato plant there. I hope you can see that. I got my first tomato. I've been spanking my tomatoes regularly and again, go back and look at my previous couple of videos to see what I'm talking about or just looking up, look it up on YouTube. Um, but that's the tomato, so I'm happy to see my first tomato on there. Um, I usually haven't had that much success. Let's take a look up here. And what we've got, now I've got to pull back the screening. Uh, actually, this was that one there. Uh, the birds have kind of been getting to it, I think, because it looks like it's been thinned out a bit. So I've been putting the screening back on, even though it kind of suffers with the screening. And now looking here at the, uh, let's see, Malabar spinach. I've still got that tiny little one in the middle. hasn't really gotten any further. Um, the Swiss chard, there's one right in the center there that seems to be growing. And somebody out on the street deciding to go fast. <laughs> um, let's see, uh, the regular spinach is doing nicely. No real uh, progress in terms of the uh, basil. Sorry, I guess it's still a little early in the morning. I'm tripping over my own tongue. And nothing in the nasturtium here. But I did notice yesterday, and hopefully it'll still be there, in the melon patch, that I had... Yep, there's another one right down there that's popping. Now that looks to be more on the canary melon side. Whereas I've got the two that are growing on the um, lemon drop melon side, which is not a normal melon. That's one that I saved from seed and you just can't get. I've pretty much told you about all of this stuff here. You can see the nasturtiums growing nicely. Um, I don't see any development, any buds in any of these. Um, I did notice, and I will point out to you, that my broccoli has a head. It's an actual <laughs> broccoli growing on there, despite the plant being so spindly. Um, oh, we've got some development in the carrots, in the Tonda di Perigi. Um, really small little sprouts there. Uh, nothing else here. On the experiment with the uh, geraniums, those are doing nicely. And the snapdragon and more nasturtium growing nicely. Now, back there, I've got a ton of geranium. Turns out that's a royal geranium or royal pelargonium uh, or a Martha Washington uh, geranium. I, that one plant that I had done the cuttings to get these to, I decided to really cut it back and help it grow. And when I did that, I discovered it was sitting in one of these nursery pots uh, inside a larger pot. I hadn't even noticed that when I did the original cuttings. Um, but So I ended up doing a lot of cuttings. I cut it way back. And that's not all of them. Some of them I had to throw away just because I didn't have enough pots. So that's uh, an excess of pots. I'm going to bring a couple of them to my parents' place and let them enjoy them, assuming the cuttings survive. Now, that was just yesterday. Uh, I got more plants up along the wall in the back there which are all just from volunteers as I, was, as I was cleaning up some other pots. So let me go outside and I'll show you where all of that is. Okay, so that's the geranium in question. It was seriously overgrown. If you look, if you rewind a bit, you might actually see it. Um, but I cut it way, way back and I took it out of the nursery pot and actually planted it in that pot. So that's that one that I got all the cuttings from. Another plant over here, which I don't know what it is, but at some point I'm going to try and figure out if I should cut it back or whatever. Um, up here we've got the nasturtiums, which are doing nicely. Um, I had flowers before. I thought I had one on here. Don't know, but uh, coming back over here, let's see what we've got on this one. And you're sort of discovering as I am. Um, so I've got a couple of flowers there. Oh, there we go. I wanted. This is what I was thinking. I wanted to show you. That was a flower that has passed. And that is the seed growing right in the middle there. So if I can catch it in time, I'm going to harvest that seed, and I'll be able to plant another peach melba from that. Uh, I don't see another 
flower on this one so I think that's it as far as the nasturtiums uh, over here you can see I cleaned up a few pots that's where a lot of this came from and I literally cleaned a few pots so those are ready for more plants um, coming around you can see the um, Nandina is doing okay <laughs> nothing spectacular it still looks kind of spindly but uh, that's pretty much it for this side the cuttings I did for the geraniums are now up in these hanging planters uh, that was about the only hanging planter along this side of the office building that had a usable plant um, a morning glory it's kind of sickly but still there uh, moving on believe it or not there's one in there another cutting doesn't look great but um, and these this is going to be the real experiment is these over here where they get so much sun but that's that um, that's all the geranium cuttings the petunias are bouncing back now since I cleaned out some of the I deadheaded and finally let's see if we can get this well I was going to show you that uh, I moved my birdhouse style feeder out a little bit and I was kind of hoping that the birds I'd be able to show you a little of the birds but uh, they're a little too afraid of me oh, I just saw one fly by but um, anyway so I moved it out a little bit so it's a little bit more visible from here and a little bit further away from my patio so that uh, I don't have too much problems well I still have a little bit of a problem with them dropping seeds or seed husks all over my big planter there right underneath it um, that's sticking out probably about a foot and a half away from it and up over the next plant but uh, anyway I guess I'll end with that for this particular episode and we'll see what next week brings <laughs>